Hello, welcome you all to today's lecture. I uh, expect that, that uh, you had gone through uh, the uh, reduction part which I initiated last time. Uh, we will briefly look at what we did and then proceed with uh, the remaining part of the uh, lecture. Now we, what we did was to introduce uh, redu reducing agents which are uh, sodium borohydride and uh, uh, lithium aluminum hydride and we discussed that uh, normal uh, simple carbonyl groups such as aldehyde or ketones can be reduced to the corresponding hydroxy group with uh, either of the reagents. We also uh, saw that the, uh, the reactivity of sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride could be altered for making them sterically hindered by reacting them with uh, alcohols such as methanol or ethanol or even tertiary butanol. And in this respect I explained that lithium aluminum tri-tertiary butoxy hydride is a basically a very um, strong and sterically hindered reducing agent. And uh, then we also saw the reductions of uh, uh, alpha beta unsaturated ketones. Uh, or aldehydes and accordingly uh, as we discussed it is not a simple case with lithium aluminum hydride and it can lead to uh, the uh, corresponding allylic alcohol or uh, uh, the um, corresponding ketone or the corresponding saturated alcohol depending on various conditions. We also discussed uh, that reduction of uh, other functional groups especially with uh, lithium aluminum hydride such as nitro uh, and uh, the azide to the corresponding amine can occur with uh, lithium aluminum hydride. The cyano can be converted to the corresponding primary amine and uh, of course uh, epoxides can be converted to the corresponding alcohols and we discussed various steric uh, aspects of uh, epoxides and of course we can also convert the corresponding to the trans alkene. We will we'll discuss more aspects of these reactions in a while. So these are the various things that we discussed uh, last time and now we look at that the uh, not only alpha beta unsaturated uh, ketones or aldehydes but also alpha beta unsaturated esters such as this can be reduced to the corresponding allylic alcohols uh, by reacting with uh, the um, lithium aluminum hydride. But as you can see the reaction is uh, done generally at high temperature uh, 55 degrees obviously because the uh, esters are less uh, electrophilic in the nature relative to the carbonyl compounds such as aldehyde or a ketone. So uh, the esters we discussed that the esters can be reduced to the corresponding primary alcohols. Uh, you say you have here R group, any R group and that can be converted to the corresponding primary alcohol. But then as uh, this particular uh, ester is in conjugation with the double bond and therefore the uh, reduction of the uh, ester gives the corresponding allylic alcohol. Now we had take uh, cyclic uh, esters which are nothing but lactones and they give the corresponding diol. So we have a lactone like this which gives the corresponding diol via obviously the corresponding lactol. So in this particular simpler case when the reduction occurs we have uh, uh, the intermediate as the lactol 
which is then further reduced to the corresponding diol because a lactol is nothing but a hydroxy aldehyde bin because this once this opens it is going to form the omega hydroxy aldehyde. Now in some cases uh, especially uh, in this example as it is reported in the literature that the reduction of this lactone gives the corresponding lactol and the reaction stops at this particular stage uh, for, for steric reasons and therefore such uh, rare conversions of the lactone to the corresponding lactol are not normally seen in the literature. They are generally uh, found to lead to the corresponding diol. But then there are different reagents which are useful for uh, stopping the reaction from um, ester to the uh, aldehyde or lactone to the lactol uh, if one tries to look at the, uh, the re uh, reactivity of those reagents and compare with lithium aluminum hydride. Now before we proceed to that, um, I just wanted to uh, show that the uh, lithium aluminum hydride which we have uh, used is uh, an ionic uh, reagent and in which we have uh, basically uh, the aluminum part as negatively charged species and where the ALH4 species is basically a nucleophilic species. Now if we uh, try to look at the um, modifications that have been done uh, in the literature and uh, introduce different types of uh, reagents, one has uh, look, introduced a, a very interesting reagent known as dibol or diisobutyl aluminum hydride and in many places they write is as dibol H that is diisobutyl aluminum hydride or simply dibol or many type places you will see simply dibol. So uh, this dibol as uh, the name says and it is diisobutyl aluminum hydride. So it is something like this. So you have here isobutyl two of them and of course there is one hydrogen. Now if you look at the aluminum part here and compare with the aluminum part of lithium aluminum hydride, you can see that this is uh, electrophilic in the nature that is because it is trivalent. Whereas uh, lithium aluminum hydride case it was a tetravalent. So there is a difference in the two of these reagents and therefore it is uh, uh, not surprising uh, that there is a difference in terms of the reactivity. So the aluminum in diisobutyl aluminum hydride is trivalent and therefore electrophilic in the nature whereas uh, in the case of lithium aluminum hydride it is uh, tetravalent and therefore nucleophilic in the nature because there is a negative charge on the aluminum. Now this is uh, something which is uh, very interesting but before the dibol was introduced people had also tried to look at the reactivity of aluminum hydride. But there was a problem uh, because uh, the aluminum hydride is not easy to handle. Therefore uh, they tried to look at the diisobutyl aluminum hydride which is relatively more easy to handle. But then there is a comparison between the aluminum hydride and diisobutyl aluminum hydride that both of them are trivalent in the nature and therefore are uh, electrophilic uh, towards uh, their reaction with an ester or uh, carbonyl group. In uh, the reactions which have been um, uh, studied in detail, it is found that uh, the uh, ester uh, is uh, easily converted to the corresponding aldehyde in, in, uh, in dichloromethane reaction medium. 
That means esters reduction to the aldehyde could be stopped using dichloromethane. It does not mean that ester cannot be converted to the corresponding alcohol in dichloromethane. It can be converted but under certain conditions which I will discuss. And on the other hand if one takes the ester and if one uh, reacts with dibol uh, in THF for example, then the alcohol is formed and it is difficult to stop the reaction at the aldehyde stage. So, there are two different conditions one is esters uh, reaction in dichloromethane and the other is the reaction of ester in the THF uh, medium. Now, THF as you know is tetrahydrofuran. So, the, there is something called as effect of participating and non-participating reagents or solvents. For example, when uh, the reaction of an ester is carried out with diisobutyl aluminum hydride in dichloromethane or toluene, these solvents are basically non-participating solvents. That is, uh, they do not uh, have any interaction with any of the electrophilic species which are present during the reaction. So, if uh, uh, if you take an ester and react it with diisobutyl aluminum hydride, so you start with uh, uh, something like this where you have the aluminum species here with the hydrogen being here and isobutyl group being here and then there is an interaction between the lone pair of electron on the uh, ester oxygen to the uh, aluminum of diisobutyl aluminum hydride that leads to this ionic species. That is not the case uh, with lithium aluminum hydride. In the case of lithium aluminum hydride, the, the reducing species is Li, ALH4 minus which is nucleophilic and lithium plus is uh, uh, electrophilic. Lithium plus interacts with the oxygen of the ester and uh, initiates the, uh, uh, the reaction where the, the nucleophilic species ALH4 minus then interacts at this uh, center to form this. That the difference between these two is that the interaction of the uh, ester oxygen to the diabol since it leads to such an ionic intermediate where now the aluminum which was originally trivalent in the diisobutyl aluminum hydride now has become tetravalent with a negative charge. And therefore, it is now capable of transferring a hydride. On the other hand, in the case of uh, uh, lithium aluminum hydride, the reducing species was already present to transfer as a hydride, but then uh, the initiation of the reaction occurs with the lithium plus coordinating to the oxygen and thereby the hydride transfer the reagent. So, there is a this is the difference. Another difference is as you can see that in the in the case of lithium aluminum hydride as we discussed earlier we have this uh, intermediate where we have this and that leads to eventually the formation of this particular uh, ionic intermediate where there is a lithium as well as the uh, aluminum species which are present as this and this is an ionic species. This is the intermediate group form uh, starting with this where you have an ALH3 here. So, this particular intermediate is ionic intermediate on the other hand when the in the case of dibol when the dibol which is a trivalent to start with eventually becomes a tetravalent and transfers the hydride the way I have shown it here that leads to that leads to the uh, formation of uh, a, uh, an intermediate which is non-ionic. So, there is a difference between this intermediate and the intermediate which is formed via the uh, reaction of lithium aluminum hydride. This is a non-ionic intermediate and this is an 
ionic intermediate. And since I mentioned that ionic intermediate is more uh, uh, de, uh, unstable and therefore decomposes faster whereas the ionic uh, non-ionic intermediate uh, does not uh, decompose readily it is stable under the reaction conditions and then water is added which leads to the hemiacetal and of course that breaks to form the corresponding aldehyde. Whereas here the ionic intermediate is not stable and during the reaction itself it, uh, it leads to the corresponding aldehyde by the loss of this particular ethoxy group and it gives directly to the corresponding aldehyde. That means during the lithium aluminum hydride reductions uh, before you quench the reaction uh, by adding water there is uh, formation of aldehyde and since there is excess of lithium aluminum hydride the aldehyde gets reduced. But in the case of dibol H the reaction uh, is uh, uh, quenched while the tetrahedral intermediate of this type which is non-ionic intermediate remains as it is and when the water is added the, uh, the cleavage of uh, this uh, takes place and then that leads to hemiacetal and then uh, when it cleaves it forms the aldehyde but then by the time the diisobutyl aluminum hydride is also not present in the reaction. So this is the major difference between the two of them say in, in a reaction uh, in uh, dichloromethane or toluene when they are non-participating um, solvents for diisobutyl aluminum hydride. Of course in the case of lithium aluminum hydride you use THF or diethyl ether as the solvent uh, for reaction because lithium aluminum hydride reacts violently with the water. Now if uh, we see the participating solvent we, we saw the non-participating solvent and these are the things which are which are basically used in dichloromethane or toluene. Now if we take a participating solvent which is what is tetrahydrofuran, this is tetrahydrofuran. If we take this uh, uh, particular solvent instead of dichloromethane, similar type of reaction occurs, similar type of dibol interaction would occur with uh, ester and similar intermediate is formed. But then since this particular intermediate is non-ionic trivalent aluminum based non-ionic uh, intermediate. Here now the THF which has uh, oxygen here with a lone pair of electrons on it interacts with the uh, trivalent aluminum and forms an ionic intermediate of this type. So now if you look at this particular intermediate which is ionic in the nature and compare it with uh, say a uh, similar type of intermediate which is formed uh, during the reaction with lithium aluminum hydride then we have similar ionic intermediate. So this ionic intermediate is similar to this ionic intermediate. So what basically what we have done it is in the reaction of diisobutyl aluminum hydride what we are trying to do is, is to generate a similar type of intermediate such as uh, uh, this ionic uh, intermediate which is formed from lithium aluminum hydride and therefore such ionic intermediate where there is a tetravalent aluminum is uh, not stable and decomposes while there is still diisobutyl aluminum hydride present in the reaction. And it forms the corresponding aldehyde and which again then reacts with diisobutyl aluminum hydride in a normal fashion forming this uh, intermediate which is uh, now uh, it should be um, uh, a non-ionic intermediate and then when you add water the reaction is quenched and you can break this oxygen aluminum bond and then this alcohol is formed. So this is how the reaction occurs uh, when in participating solvent such as tetrahydrofuran is used. And uh, uh, therefore it is difficult to uh, control the reaction at the aldehyde C. 
So, in case of using use of diisobutyl aluminum hydride if one wants to stop the reaction at the aldehyde stage then one takes uh, non participating solvent such as dichloromethane or toluene and use lithium diisobutyl aluminum hydride at low temperature generally at minus 78 degrees and uh, then uh, you use only one equivalent of the uh, reducing agent and slowly bring the reaction temperature up and in such a situation this uh, non ionic trivalent intermediate is, um, is uh, stable and at that uh, point you add water to quench and then you go via this hemiacetal and the aldehyde is formed. On the other hand if one wants to use the same dichloromethane or toluene as a non participating solvent and want the reaction to go all the way to the corresponding alcohol then you use excess of uh, diisobutyl aluminum hydride or at least two equivalents of diisobutyl aluminum hydride at the uh, reagent at lower temperature and or at a little bit higher temperature such as room temperature and then warm the reaction to the corresponding uh, say room temperature or something like that. Then what happens that you have an intermediate which is a um, uh, non uh, ionic uh, intermediate it then breaks at, at a relatively um, higher temperature when I mean higher temperature I mean room temperature or something like that it breaks and goes to the aldehyde and then of course the aldehyde then gets reduced to the corresponding alcohol. But on the other hand if you use uh, participating solvent such as THF then of course you can easily go to the corresponding alcohol directly. So both, both the possibilities exist and under both the conditions the reactions have been reported in the literature. Now what happens to the esters and uh, ester and lactone reductions uh, with diisobutyl aluminum hydride or dibol H or dibol simply is that we take the corresponding alpha beta unsaturated ester and as I mentioned that if we simply take the excess of the reagent and start at the from low temperature and bring it to the room temperature the reduction occurs via aldehyde and eventually to the corresponding alcohol uh, and we can isolate the alcohol easily. Uh, in the case of lactone um, uh, since we are in a position to uh, stop the reaction of an ester to the corresponding aldehyde uh, it also means that we can stop the reaction of a lactone to the corresponding lactol. As we can see here that if we take a lactone of this type here, here and we can stop the reaction at the lactol stage if the dibol H is added at uh, minus 78 degrees and we uh, do not allow the reaction to uh, go to a high temperature with excess of uh, uh, dibol H then of course and we quench after the reduction is done at low temperature then we can get the corresponding lactone. In the reduction of uh, nitrile and uh, alkyne uh, also diisobutyl aluminum hydride can be utilized and uh, for example here nitrile uh, reacts with uh, say diisobutyl aluminum hydride or this sterically hindered uh, lithium aluminum trialkoxy hydride and we can stop the reaction at by transferring one hydrogen and say in the case of dibol to this stage and now we do not have an excess of hydrogen we do not use dibol in excess we do not use this lithium aluminum trialkoxy hydride in excess we just use one equivalent and therefore we can stop the reaction at this stage and after that if we uh, here uh, say you add a small amount of uh, acid and add water this gets hydrolyzed and one can stop the reaction at the aldehyde stage. Otherwise as we have already discussed that we can start with a nitrile and uh, go with a reducing agent like lithium aluminum hydride to the corresponding uh, amine 
that is not the case uh, here and therefore there is a possibility of converting this nitrile to the corresponding aldehyde if one tries to use a reagent like uh, dibol H or uh, lithium aluminum uh, lithium tri tertiary alkoxy hydride where only one hydrogen is uh, is utilized. Uh, at the same time if one looks at the re reducing nature of uh, uh, lithium aluminum hydride towards acetylene as we discussed earlier we get the corresponding trans uh, alkene. What is happening is here when the aluminum hydride the ALH4 minus interacts with the triple bond the pi cloud uh, pi electron cloud is uh, uh, moving away uh, to the other side of the double bond and the hydrogen from the aluminum hydride which is negatively charged attacks from the opposite side of the, the that particular movement of electrons. As a result if the hydride is attacking from the lower side then the, uh, the corresponding uh, shift of electron density occurs from the top. And therefore, the negatively charged part of the uh, molecule then grabs the ALH3 to form this uh, ALH3 carbon, the, uh, carbon bond here with a negative charge in aluminum. When this is quenched with water in the presence of say H plus here, then you break the carbon aluminum bond and have the hydrogen coming here, which leads to the trans olefin. And uh, if we uh, take diisobutyl aluminum hydride then uh, we can uh, go to the corresponding uh, alkene but then the reaction occurs in such a fashion that it gives uh, cis or olefin. So we have uh, a possibility of uh, converting stereoselectively a triple bond to the cis or a trans double bond depending on which reagent we use. Of course, we can also use hydrogenation conditions uh, where we use Rosenman reduction with a uh, poisoned catalyst. So, we will uh, take up this remaining part of how to convert the uh, acetylenes to the corresponding cis uh, olefins with diisobutyl aluminum hydride and some other reductions uh, and uh, transformations where reductions are used in organic chemistry in the next class. So, so till then you take care of reductions and then look at it, study it and then we will take up next time. Thank you and goodbye.